welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you guys tapping in. As always, much, much appreciated. This is Exhausted Performance. If you're new here, consider subscribing. We got a lot of interesting content, uh, and it's not just car reviews, believe me. I put this thing to the test. So, if you like it, smack that subscribe button. Also, if you're interested, smack that like button too. Kind of lets YouTube algorithm know uh, what we're doing over here, that you like the content, you like the stuff that I'm putting out, and it really does help the channel. So, that being said, let's get right into it. 2018 Dodge Challenger Scat Pack. So, here's the thing. 2018, 2019, little bit of a difference. The Scat Packs that a lot of people are used to now have a lot more features on it, uh, a lot more SRT qualities. SRT. So, it's a little bit different than what you might think. Um, when Dodge stopped making the 392 edition, the SRT models, uh, they started pouring all of the SRT technology into the new scat packs. So 2019 to present is getting a lot of bells and whistles that didn't necessarily get offered on uh, the 2018 or 2015 to 2018 model. Right away, the most unique feature that's gonna stand out is gonna be that destroyer gray paint. Their paint codes that Dodge releases every two to three years is uh, alternating. They rotate them so you can't just get the Destroyer Gray or the Plum Crazy Purple. Uh, things like that only come out every so often. So uh, that was kind of a deal breaker for me if I couldn't get that Destroyer Gray because I really, 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 really love the way that it accents the body lines and the way that it really makes everything stand out. It's super bold to me. It's that really matte gloss gray and you don't find that on uh, just any kind of vehicle. I know that there are some Nardo gray uh, comparisons for other companies but ain't nothing like Destroyer Gray. And when you pair that with the 392 that you've got under the hood, uh, to me this is just a monster. So right away here's one of the differences between the new uh, 2019 and ups and the 2018 and down is the new ones come with a smaller B and they have a 392 badge versus these where they have that 6.4. So when you roll up on somebody, you just let them know what you're all about from the gate. So kind of intimidating. I get a lot of questions about that. Um, I went with the uh, special package, which the stock rims that come on the Scatties are not like this. And they also don't have painted calipers. So um, I wanted something pretty unique, right? I mean, if we're going to pay all the money for the car, then at least make it stand out and make it yours, right? So went with the red Brembos, um, went with the uh, gloss gray rims. So this was a, a, an alternate package. Um, the one thing that I am a little bit sad about is that I do not have a sunroof. That was the only option that I really wish I would have went with. Hindsight, but... You know, it's all right. I roll the windows down, does what it's supposed to do. Plus, if you'll notice on these 2018s and below, they have a different hood. The 2019 and up has that new SRT hood. And hey, I don't know. I think that this hood is, is the OG style. Um, this is how they came from the 70s. You know, this kind of just screams muscle car to me. The new ones are really cool, but to me, that was always like a Hellcat hood. You know, so to put the Hellcat components on, the scat pack is is just kind of faking the funk but yeah whatever um i think that all in all when you put everything together all the little add-ons um it really makes this specific car a unique feature i don't ever see any other scat packs like mine um i see a lot of factory option right and they still look good uh but to me this was was just more unique so paired up with those rims and brakes the stock scats come with 245s all the way around but if you've ever driven a scat pack you know that there is no such thing as traction when it comes to these tires so i always go for at least 275s and up uh, i'm actually thinking about upgrading to 295s just to see what something like that would do for uh my traction you know I, i'm not one to really take this thing to the track uh if you guys watch the channel you know that we have been to the track and it's not that it's not fun um but i like to go in circles not in straight lines <laughs> so also if you like swinging videos make sure you tap in here too we got a lot of that um but yeah so it's it's all about really just exercising 
the full capabilities of this car. Um, this naturally aspirated 392 puts out 485 horsepower, 475 pound-feet of torque. It's really hard to keep traction on any line, right? Which is also why it's really good for going in suburbs. Uh, I think all Mopar owners have done or do donuts often. Uh, that's that's just part of the fun of these cars. We all know that if traction doesn't exist, then it's almost like it encourages you to go in a circle, right? Let's check out the interior. I went with the all black interior and I also went with the cloth seats and here's why. Some people go, oh, you didn't get the leather. No, one leather is really hot, it's really sticky and it's hard to maintain. These cloth seats never, ever, ever let me down, especially in the summertime. Uh, but I like the all black look just because I think that it's really sleek. Um, I've done a, a couple of little little add-ons just to, just to make things pop. Uh, you can't see it right now, but when you open the door, there is an LED scat pack light where I replace the puddle lights that go down in there. So if we pop in, fire her up. We have the 8-inch Uconnect screen that is legit. I love how this pretty much just everything for the challenger is so driver centered um it's it's geared towards you it almost has that angle where if you're on the passenger side i don't want to say you feel disconnected but there is no confusing the two right when you're in even something like the charger where it's got um the very linear uh, center console then it it feels like it's the same on both sides so the challenger i really do like about that because everything is driver centered the uconnect screen is even slightly tilted towards the driver um, you can see here along the panel so if we look down here in the button cluster we notice that we do not have any srt buttons okay um, we do have a super track pack button and if we press that what that does is it brings up all of our different modes here. So we have our launch control, which is pretty fun. Um, I have mine set kind of low. It's at uh, 1800 right now. So, but here's the difference. Uh, if, and I've done a video on launch control. I'll put the link for that down in the description. If you guys are interested, you can check that out. Uh, I pretty much compared the difference of is launch control any different than just a, a brake stand launch. Um, so you can check that out and, and see how you feel. Uh, but yeah, so this is basically uh, kind of letting the transmission and uh, the rear end know that you are about to do work. Okay. <laughs> Um, so I just don't know if it really does make any difference like that. Um, here we have our drive mode set up, right? So this tells us where we're currently at, whereas the normal ones you'll find it has like uh, track mode and custom and all of that stuff. Here we only have sport on this uh, 18, uh, well 15 to 18 all has sport mode. And then once you get 19 and up, that's when you got those SRT components. So it was a little bit different. You have your uh, adjustable steering, um, you have the um, flat bottom steering wheels, you have the adaptive suspension, um, there's custom mode, track mode which pulls like crazy uh so we don't have all of those bells and whistles but that's just about the only difference between ours and theirs um and i say ours because i consider y'all family so that brings you in on it too uh oh yeah i forgot to show you guys <laughs> okay so if i go over here and I open up my performance pages. These are uh, just about the same though when you compare side by side. Mine does not say SRT when you bring it up, but that's okay because I don't need it to. Um, this is where we get all of our pretty much real-time readout on what's going on with the car. So everything from the oil temp, coolant, our voltage, the oil pressure. If I go over to the next page, we have the transmission temperature, also the temperature of the air coming in. Um, if I come up here, I have all of my timers. So what this does is it kind of just resets itself every time and you can get everything from your best zero to 60, zero to 100, eighth mile, quarter mile. Um, how much is it taking you in your braking distances, right? Some of us need to work on brake times. Um, down here, I go to my G-force meter. Um, this is kind of the same in all, even in the 
uh, Durango review, you'll note that it's a different layout in, in the cluster here, but it's still the same uh, concept, right? So it measures all of our peak G-force on all four sides of the car, um, lets us know where we're getting our best aerodynamics. And then we go down here, we have our current readout. So this lets us know our oil pressure, our pound feet, our horsepower. Go down to our dyno right here, real time readout. Gives us all of our measures. So it is nice to be able to have uh, the ability to read these things in real time because you know if you're one who likes your performance if you're one who uh, is constantly trying to improve then being able to keep up with this is great you can also actually um, snapshot these you can save them to a USB drive which is located in the center console um, and then that way you can keep track with all that stuff as well another amazing selling point on these cars is the Uconnect itself is just probably one of the top rated systems uh, to date. Um, its connectivity is amazing, the options are amazing, everything about it really just impresses. Uh, but another great seller for me was the Apple CarPlay option. So if you like to be able to see everything all at once, um, if you have iPhone, uh, they also have Android Car in here as well. So um, you can use that on your Android phones. But it's really nice to be able to have all of this stuff together at once because the last thing you want to do when you're whipping these boats around is be shuffling for your phone. So it pretty much puts everything up right here for you um, on the screen and then you can actually itemize everything yourself. You can even go down here to your apps, um, so on and so forth, and, and bring everything up that way. Read your text messages to you, you can talk to Siri, you can send uh, messages, make phone calls, uh, use all your voice commands that you would normally do with your phone, you can do it right here through the car, so that's pretty awesome too. Now the one thing that I will say about the Challenger over some of the larger Mopars like the Charger or the Durango, something like that on the interior, um, is that it is a, a little bit smaller, right? You're talking, it's a two-door muscle car, so you can't expect humongous amounts of space on the inside. However, I will remind you that it is leading in its class for interior space and passenger seating for muscle cars, okay? So that beats out the Mustang, that beats out the Camaro as well. So we still have five seats, you can still seat five, uh, comfortably is a question. That just depends on how large these people are. Now, I sit with my seat pretty far back, um, but even when I move my seat up, uh, there's still plenty of room for people to sit behind me. So I've never really had any complaints, but you know, I guess that's, that's subjective. So um, I do like that both seats do fold down though. So we do have singular, and then we also have the double. Um, and believe me, when I'm <laughs> when I'm swapping tires, when I'm out there swinging it, that really comes in handy because I have to lay all the seats down so that I can get my tires in here. But as far as interior space goes, though, it is really, really big, especially if you're in the front seat. Uh, leg room is awesome. There's no uh, constriction. You don't really feel like you're you're being, you know, held in here. Uh, Mustangs and Camaros, you kind of just can't wait to get out of the car because you're so cramped up. So at least I don't have that problem. And here is the beast. This is what operates this bad boy. Big old naturally aspirated, 6.4 liter, 392. Powered by SRT, but it is not technically an SRT vehicle. So that's another thing I'm thinking about doing a video on is the comparison between uh, the older scat packs and the new scat packs and whether or not they are actually SRTs. So, this thing is the powerhouse. Um, very well laid out. I really love the map out on this. I think that if you are gonna have one though, that you should really think about doing um, sway bars. And that's gonna be my next mod, just because I can tell you from swinging it, and even if you just drive hard, um, cutting corners, things like that, the body roll on these cars, because of the massive weight, you're talking 4,200 pounds without any passengers, um, you, you start to notice that after a while, believe me. So think about that. I think another really cool 
selling point on these cars is look a 392 is just a gas guzzler even the the hellcats with the 61 they just destroy fuel like it doesn't even exist you spend more time at the gas station than anywhere else but uh we do have the mds uh, system on here the multi-displacement system where it will shut down once you get into a certain uh, drive mode where you're just kind of cruising on the highway you'll see that it'll um, shut it down to four cylinders only firing so that it will consume less gas which is really cool because um, if you got all eight firing all the time then you're probably using more fuel than you need so the modern technology paired with the horsepower is is a really cool feature as well because nobody wants to spend uh, uh, truck money on gas when you're just driving a car so as far as daily driving goes the scat pack um, I would have to say one it's the most fun I've ever had on a regular basis uh, and two you know it's it's pretty good on gas uh, they say 15 city 25 highway but really that's all dependent on how on how you drive right if you drive you know one big toe granny style then yeah you're probably gonna get 15 18 miles to the gallon in town uh, if you drive like me right now we're at 10 and that's pretty that's pretty good I'll be honest with you But the most fun that you could possibly have with this thing is on the open road. Yes, sir. Uh, and all that really does is it opens up the active exhaust system uh, which allows you know more air to flow through um, it pretty much just takes all those restrictions off there there is no governor on the 392s fun fact so you're not really gonna get any restrictions in the power band uh, but you know obviously you you substitute some of the traction for more horsepower because the way these computers work is you know they're gonna try and limit your horsepower um, when you have your full traction on depending on your driving conditions and how wild you're trying to get so you know it is nice to be able to uh, open it up when you want to this baby moves though you know it doesn't have the uh, that overall 200 on the dash like like the Hellcat does but the immediate throttle response that you get from the 392 is really fun um, you know that torque always puts you in your seat look people moving over all the time just because there's, there's a full open lane ahead of you sir and you moved over for me and I, I appreciate you for that Mr. Crown Vic you're a real one pal always fun to jump on this thing though now I'll be honest the best way to ride around is always going to be in manual you're going to have the most fun do that hemi talk if you listen close you can hear that alternator whine see I told you everybody moves over for what it's a Mopar thing, man. Even the V6s get low like this. do I recommend absolutely in 2022 is it actually possible I'm gonna be honest with you I don't really know uh, the markups right now I just went and looked at a 392 Daytona uh, two days ago 
and wow it's like ten to fifteen thousand dollar markups on these v8s because dodge is actually going to put them put them to sleep so um you gotta you gotta come to the bank with you know a little extra for that one but uh I, you know i'd say get them before before they're gone um it's a hot commodity the life on these things is actually really good you know you're you're getting um 250 300 000 miles out of these things if you take care of them well uh you know i made sure to pay for the extended warranty and all that stuff that way if anything happens i'm not i'm not worried about it you know so it doesn't mean i'm gonna abuse it uh but i am gonna use it to its full potential so when you put it like that it's like hey what are you gonna do it's gonna do it for this one guys i appreciate you all tapping in thank you so much look if you like it consider subscribing okay and if you really like it consider slapping that like button because i do appreciate you for it anyway a uh, lot more to come on the channel we got a lot more swinging we got a lot more car meets hopefully we got a lot more reviews if you guys like this check out the all-wheel drive 2022 dodge durango rt that i just reviewed uh that one's a lot of fun uh, i'll put the link down below in the description for you guys so you can tap in and uh yeah if you like that let me know about that too so until the next time i will catch you on the next one exhausted performance